that time that we get started. We bless the Lord. We give him praise. We give him glory. We give him honor. For he is our God, and there is no God beside our God. There is no God like our God who keeps on blessing over and over and over again. We magnify him and lift him up because of his goodness and his mercy toward us. How he keeps on blessing over and over and over again. I love the Lord because he first loved me. I love the Lord because he demonstrated his love towards me and that while we were sinners, Christ died on the cross to save us from our sins. How awesome is our God and worthy of all of our praise. We shall always praise him for there is never enough praise that goes up to our God for all that he has done. And we bless him, we magnify him, we lift him up. Praise him.
to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Acts 3, verses 1 through 8. May God richly bless his very word and sanctify in our hearts that we may rejoice. In knowing that God is able to do great things among us, to include healing, one that was born, lame from his mother's womb. Let us pray. Gracious God, we magnify your name. We lift you up and we give you praise for your awesome kindness toward us. Lord, as we come before you this morning, we come, Lord God, in a time when our world is divided in so many ways. Father, we come at a time when there's so much going on around us. All we can do, Lord God, is look to the hills from which come in our help. Father, in the marvelous, matchless name of Jesus Christ, we humbly call on your holy name. Because he died on the cross to give us the right to enter into the holies of holies. Lord God, as we come into your presence now, Lord, we pray that you move in a mighty way. Touch us one by one and name by name. For all those under the sound of my voice here in the temple, those right now that are at home on the phone conference, those who are gathered on Facebook, those, Father, that may be in the parking lot right now, God, we lift you up and we give you praise. We praise you as one body united together, Lord God, to magnify your holy name because you have called us to be one. Make us one, Lord God, one with the Father, one with the Son, one with the Holy Spirit. That we may receive, Lord God, your awesome goodness toward us. That we may witness your power moving in a mighty way, Lord God. Father, we need a touch in the land right now. God, we need your Holy Spirit to move in a mighty way. Father, we need you to break every yoke of bond and every chain right now, Lord God. Father, we ask right now that you call every wall that separates us to collapse right now, God. Like you caused that Jericho wall to flatten. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now that you move in a mighty way. That your eyes search out those things that are not of you, Lord God. We pray that you cut it out, you perform your spiritual surgery now, God. To strengthen us to lift up holy hands and to give you praise. Father, we pray that on this hour, as we come forth right now with your word, that you move in a mighty way. God, we pray that your word will go forth and not return into your void, and that everything we do in this worship service will bring glory to your holy name. Not only on this day, Lord God, but every day of our lives, let us live in such a way that our life will be a testimony to somebody who's lost in the street. Father, we bless you now and we pray that you will help us, Lord God. Help us to be witnesses for you in everything that we do, Lord God. God, we will family give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise be unto God. We give him thanks and praise again for this hour of fellowship. Amen. To study his word and to magnify his name. We pray to God that on this day, we pray that each one of you will be blessed in your hearing, amen, in the sanctuary or again on Facebook, on the telephone or in the parking lot. We pray that each one will receive a blessing on this day from the Word of God. And that the Word of God will stir you to a closer relationship with Him. 
As you know, we are still in the pandemic phase, amen, and that we encourage everyone to sanitize, mask up, amen, keep your distance. Do those things, and uh, you have a 99.9% .9 chance that you will not get the virus, amen. I always leave that fraction because in human error, things happen, not because we're bad people, but in human error, things do happen, amen, because none of us are perfect. Uh, the thing that is there of us, the thing that uh, bother us is that of um, when, when people uh, are going around saying it's just a, a theory and that it's not, you know, a conspiracy, that it's not real. We need to help you realize that this thing is real. 400,000 deceased persons, a little over 400 now, probably deceased person declares that this is real. Amen, somebody. That we must govern ourselves in such a way that we give him the praise and we give him the honor. I'm going to say, as I have said on numerous occasions, amen, that wearing a mask and, and, and doing those things will not diminish your faith in God. Amen. Will not diminish your faith in God. Do the right thing and God will bless you and take care of you each and every day. Just know that. Um, and so we trust it. Uh, we ask that you continue to pray for our nation. Amen. Pray for our nation uh, and, and pray for the world around us. You will hear me mention in, in, uh, in the message that the world is in trouble. You know, it's not just us. It's all across the world. But we, as a nation, we are divided. And, and uh, the unrest is not over. <laughs> Amen. The unrest is not over, so we ask that you be vigilant in prayer and be vigilant in your observing of things around you. Amen. You never know what uh, radical people might attempt to do. And they're among us. Amen. They are among us. We need to understand that they are among us. And there are people who mean you no good. And so govern yourselves accord and, and do the things that uh, glorifies God. Um, and, and we, we thank God and we praise him. Uh, the Larry, I don't know if I can get the thing now because he's in there uh, quite as well. Because what we, what we want to do is, uh, Irving, you on the line? All right, I, I'm, I'm going to get Larry to turn on this podium mic right here. Amen. Turn on this mic. Amen. And Irby got an announcement she's going to make. Amen. She tried to give it to me last week. And I'm putting it on her right now. So you can hear. You got, you got this one on? Amen. Testing one. Testing one. Testing one. Hallelujah. If you're not testing one, I ain't hearing nothing yet. You want me to get one of these other ones? Where, where, where are you other ones? Testing one, two, testing one, two. There you go. All right, Irving.
they heard her on Facebook or not, but I know it went out of there, amen. And she's announcing that service for next week that she will see on Facebook. She gave it to me and I read it on the telephone now. She, she called me up, she said, Pastor Lance, you didn't do a good job announcing that last week. <laughs> I told her, I told her, I don't, uh, I don't like the tooth going on. The Bible says, let another man praise you, not you yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we give God praise and, uh, and we thank God for everyone present in the house. Amen. Um, and those, again, Facebook Live Home Conference. Uh, I believe I heard somebody in the parking lot earlier. I think, yeah, yeah, I've heard some problem on FM 87.7, I believe it is. Um, love yourselves a court, and as we have said and continue to say, uh, the God that we serve is an awesome God who's worthy to receive all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. What I found out is that sometimes life will throw you some curves. Amen, somebody. <laughs> life, life will throw you some curves. But you at least expect things happen. But we thank God that God is able to see us through all things. So with that, uh, Brother Blue will lead us in another selection, and uh, we'll bring forth the word.
to deliver, Lord God, that which you will deliver, to stir hearts of men and women, to lift up your name and to be an example to others in the street. Break every yoke of bondage, Lord God, that men may be on that this time, that they may give you praise and come into your fold. We praise you, we bless you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Bless his holy name. We are certainly, as we were saying a little while ago, living in some difficult time. Amen, somebody. Racial and political unrest and tension all around us. Pandemic that, as we said earlier, have killed over 4,000, 400,000 people in America. And there are people who still walk around trying to say that this is all just a whole sort of conspiracy. As a result of the pandemic, the economy is messed up because of a lot of things being shut down and not producing. People right here in the United States of America, we have people who are hungry, we have people who are homeless, we have people who are without hope, amen. Feel like nothing will ever change. And in the midst of all of this turmoil uh, in the secular world, my heart is grieved because I watch and I see us as a church, the body of Christ, I see the body of Christ being divided along political ideology, amen, and fighting for things that have nothing to do with God or allow themselves to be so uh, moved by one sin that they overlook another sin. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. They're so zealous against one thing that they think the other one is trivial. Amen. But how many know sin is sin? How many know God hates all sin? He doesn't put a, a level on sin as we do. Sin is sin. Amen. And so we see all of this going on around us. And, and so we may not realize, but what the enemy is doing is trying to divide the church to weaken our influence on the community. We are allowing the community, we are allowing the secular world to influence us when we have been called to influence the world. Are y'all hearing me? We as a church body have been called to make a statement about who God is. In fact, Paul described one of the key purposes of the church in Ephesians 3, 8 through 12. Ephesians 3, 8 through 12, he says this, To me, who am the least, who am, le who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given me that I should preach among the Gentiles, amen, that's the first thing we're supposed to be doing, is preaching among the Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all, somebody say all, all. To make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages have been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. Verse number 10, the purpose of the church. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. The manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church, watch this, to principalities and powers in heavenly places. We as a church body, and I'm not talking about just my Island, I'm talking about the church universal, have a responsibility to make known the powers and principalities in heavenly places the awesome things of an almighty God. Come on, somebody. Yeah, and he goes on to say, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Our faith in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, says that we have a responsibility to share with the world. Not allow the world to influence us, but we ought to influence the world and share with them the manifold wisdom of God, the power of God for a resurrection power that lifts men up out of their sins and helps them to rise into a new place with God. That the enemy no longer have you tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but you're able to stand. This is what we have been called to do. And we must understand that the body of Christ is strengthened, Ephesians says. The body of Christ is strengthened by what every joint supplied. In other words, we are different. Yes, we are. But it is our difference that helps us to be strong. When we bring our collective differences together, we are strong because the word says the body is strengthened by what every joint supplies. Every joint brings something to the body. None of us are better than the other one. Amen. 
Yes, I may have been called to be a preacher. Brother Blue has been called to sing and play. It. And each one of us have a gift. And when we bring our gift together, amen, somebody. When we bring it all together, stop making one bigger than the other one. And we realize that we're all equal in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Then the church can return to influence in the world. Amen. Then we can get some people saved. Amen. That's lost out there in the world. Amen. And we got to realize this all around us. But in the midst of all of this, hallelujah, somebody. In the midst of all of this, I have hope that God is still in control. In the midst of all of this, I believe that we have a God that sits high but looks low. And while he will never take away our free will to choose, God is involved in every realm and every aspect of what we do in this human society. He is getting ready to do a new thing. Come on, somebody. I believe in the midst of this. And every time something as crazy as this is going around us, God is in the midst getting ready to do a new thing. I like the way somebody preached it once, and I took it from them and preached it myself. When you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Amen, somebody. When all else, when it looked like the earth all around you is sinking, saying, God is in the midst, getting ready to pull you out of the situation. I have hope in the words of Isaiah 43, 18 through 21, where the word of God declared, do not remember the former things. Are y'all hearing me? Nor consider the things of old. God says in verse 19 of Isaiah 43, behold, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Come on, somebody. God said, I'm going to make rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostrich, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. I have hope in the word of God that God says, in the midst of a difficult situation, in the midst of your drought, I am able to bring forth water in dry places. God said, I'm able to bring a river in the desert. I want you to know today that the time for this morning is you ain't seen nothing yet. You think you've been through some things. You think you've been through some trial. But God said, I'm getting ready to move on your behalf. And baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. What God is able to do Hallelujah, somebody, in our lives. <clears throat> the psalm is declared in Psalm 62, 11. God has spoken once, twice. I have heard this power belongs to God. Amen, somebody. When we understand where the power belongs, we're not worried about what man is saying and doing. Hallelujah, somebody. When we understand and believe that the power is in his hand, we're looking for greater things and we understand our best is yet to come. And we ain't seen nothing yet. You think God bless you the other day? You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. You keep on serving him. And the word said, for those who love him. We're going to get to that in a minute. Amen. Genesis 8, 18, 14. Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. He said when he was speaking to Sarah, and they laughed. Sarah laughed like, yeah, I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> like, really, God? I'm, I'm, as old as I am, <laughs> you think I'm going to have a baby? And she laughed. God said, why did Sarah laugh? She said, I ain't laughing. Yeah, yeah, she did. She thought that was real humorous. Amen. But God said, I, I, is there anything to hard for long? At the appointed time, at the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Come on, somebody. At the appointed time, God is going to move on your behalf. At the appointed time, God is going to do something new in your life. At the appointed time, when you surrender to him and serve him, God said, I'm going to do something that will confound even the people around you. And baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. You think God brought you through some stuff before. Watch what God will do for you in the future as you move forward. As you trust him and love him. But that text says, for those who love him. Did y'all get that? For those who love him. First Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written, eyes have not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Let me, before we get to love him, let me get to that word has. That means it's already done. Amen. Y'all hear me? It's already done. He said, has prepared, ED. It's already done. The things that God's getting ready to do for you, it's already in there. It's already laid out. It's already in the spiritual realm. We just got to trust him enough to bring it down to the physical realm and know that no matter what it looks like, we will not lose hope. We have hope in the God that God is going to move on our behalf. All we got to do is trust him and love him. And begin with loving him. Loving him 
more than anything else in the world. Are y'all hearing me? Loving him more than you love your own life. What did you pay? Say, Pastor, loving him more than you love your life. The life I live now is not mine. It belongs to him. <clears throat> I said to somebody the other day, I'm just going along for the ride. I said, Lord, you are me and the co-pilot. I said that before. If people like that, y'all remember that license plate said, God is my co-pilot? They finally changed it start saying, God is my pilot. Amen, somebody. I don't want him to be the co-pilot. I want him to drive my car, baby. I want him, I want him to be in charge. Because wherever God takes me, I know it's going to be all right. Wherever God drives down the road, it's going to be all right. Sometimes he may drive me down some dark road, but I understand that he is the light. Amen. And wherever there is, wherever the light of God is, there is no darkness. I understand that God is able. Yes, he is. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Jesus answered them when they asked him, which is the greatest commandment? 22, 37 through 40. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first commandment and the great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophet. You need to understand that it begins with the love for God. And if you love God, you got to love your neighbor. How can you love God whom you have not seen and not love your neighbor? When we love God, we'll love one another. And when we love one another, we'll do the things that God has commanded us to do. When we love one another, we won't talk about one another. When we love God, we won't put each other down. When we love God, we'll begin to do everything that we can to lift one another up. We need to understand that if we want to see great things from God, we begin with loving God. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Came against you. Didn't I deliver you? And they were 
bigger than this ominous combination now. Didn't I show up? So why did you call Benadad when you should have called on God? Sometimes we call on man for help when we ought to be calling on God. Because God said, man, might show up and help you one time. And the same one that helped you one time will turn against you the next time. You don't put no trust in man. You put no trust in God. And when you love God with all your heart,
Amen. So that we can grow. Amen. Ah. Amen. You never learn how to trust him if you never go through a, a situation to learn how to trust him. Hallelujah, somebody. You will never know his power until you be in a situation that calls him to reveal his power. Hallelujah, somebody. And I ain't looking for no trouble. Don't get me wrong. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for trouble, but I understand that sometimes God allows us. Somebody say allow. But we all said, the Lord put this on me. Sometimes he allowed you to go in a situation. He didn't put it on you. But you were determined to do your own thing. So he allowed you to go in a situation. Amen. So that he can show himself strong on your behalf. Hallelujah, somebody. You've got to learn how to wait on him. The word says in Psalm 27, 14, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And in Psalm 37, 34, he said, wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. But everybody love Isaiah 40 and 31. It's one of those familiar passages that people love to say. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord and be encouraged. When the rivers are surrounded, you wait on the Lord. When the storm of life arrays, you wait on the Lord. When the enemy turn against you and come after you, wait on the Lord. When you can't see your way out, wait on the Lord. Come with your heart and on God. God will show up and show himself strong on your behalf. God will make a way for you. reverential fear because they say, ooh, I'm scared. That's not what God is talking about. Reverential fear is when you just acknowledge who he is. Come on, somebody. And you give him respect. Amen. You give him the respect that he's due because he's a good, awesome God. You give him the respect. And so you've got to fear him. Deuteronomy 6, 24 says this, and the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve a lot as it is today. He wants us to fear him. Joshua declared it this way in Joshua 24, 14 and 15. He said, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Verse 15 he said, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve rather the God which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorite in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But as he began to say it, he said, now therefore, fear the Lord. I stop by the day to day that we've got to learn how to fear him. The song that we read in Psalm 31, 18, he said, let the lion lips be put to silence when speak insolent things and proudly and contempt this against the righteous. Verse 19 of Psalm 31 says, Oh, how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you, in your presence of the Son of Man. He stopped by to tell you that when you fear him, when you love him, when you wait on him, he has already declared that he prepared good things for us. I want you to know today that you may not be able to see what God you know that God is able you and when you trust him when you love him when you fear him you ain't seen nothing yet your eyes have not seen your ears have not heard 
He said, therefore, prophesy concerning the land of Israel and say to the mountains, say to the hills, to the rivers and the valley, thus said the Lord, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and my fury because you have borne the shame of the nation. Verse number seven says, therefore, thus said the Lord God, Surely the nation that around you shall bear with their shame. I like verse number 8. Ezekiel 36, verse number 8 said, But you, O mountain of Israel, you shall shoot forth the branches and shall yield your fruit to my people in them, for they are about to come. God to get ready.
trying to, to nudge us down the narrow road. He says all his grinning, and you, you know, all his grinning is trying to nudge you. You remember when you went down a particular road, and you ran into calamity, and you said to yourself in the midst of your calamity, something told me not to go down here. <laughs> Anybody ever had a little moment? Amen. So, something told me not to say that. Something told me not to say that. It wasn't something. It was someone, the Holy Spirit, say, no. Move over. No, go down this way. No, no, don't go. Don't go. Say, I'm going anyhow. <laughs> right? And you get down to calamitous strikes. But look at God! When calamity strikes and we call on him, what does he do? He shows up. And show himself strong for those who love him. Because my brother and sister, even though we love him, sometimes we still might go down the wrong road. But, but, but I believe that when we go down the road that he chooses for us, that we go down the road that he wants for us, he's already had things prepositioned down that road to bless you. It's already there. But the reason why you haven't got there, because you got grown and went on the other road. Because the other old look did. That, that, that ain't the right way now, y'all. That ain't grammatical correct. But it looked it better. Amen. That other old look did better. Amen. It, it looked it much gooder. Children will tell this stuff. Amen. And so you went down that road. Why? Because my cousin them going down that road. Why? Because my bestest good friend going down that road. Why? You went down that road, cousin. Well, everybody else was going down the road. So I want everybody. Amen. And sometimes everybody don't get caught, but you get caught. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to it? Amen. And so you miss some of the blessing that God had for you. Because you went down the wrong road. Eyes have not seen. Yes, and not heard, neither have been in the hearts of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him, those who serve him, those who wait on him, those who trust him, those who fear him. I found that God will move on our behalf. He's already got it done and prepared. When I got on the right road, he started blessing. I'm opposed to this song. I don't get me confused. Even on the right road, sometimes you're going to hit a pit. Y'all hear what I said? Uh -huh. Even on the right road, sometimes you're going to hit a pit. Hallelujah, somebody. Even on the right road, sometimes you're going to go through a little storm. Hallelujah, somebody. That's just the enemy trying to get you to get off that road. Y'all hear me? See, just because you get on the right road doesn't mean the enemy don't try to travel with you. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Wherever you go, Paul said, he was always present. Are y'all hearing me? But the beauty of it is, is that when you stay on the road, God shows up. And again, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Yes. Try it. I tried it for myself. I found out that he would do abundantly. And the song says, exceedingly abundantly
We go before him now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you right now. Thank you for being a prayer answering God. Thank you, Lord God, for standing on a mountain, shaking what we need to shake it, Lord God. We, we thank you right now, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for being a fire when we need a fire burning hot, Lord. We thank you, God. Thank you, God, for being a healer when we need healing, Lord God. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God, for being a deliverer when we need deliverance, God. Father, we bless your name because we know you are able to do it seeing abundantly. We know that you are ready to prepare for us, those who love you, God. And God, we thank you right now for strengthening those who lost their loved ones. We thank you, God, for breathing peace in their lives that they may lift them holy hands and magnify you. God, we praise you today for you've been so good. Oh, yes, Lord, you've been so good, God. Thank you, brother.